Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Oakland Church. I'm uh, Dave King, lead pastor, and I greet you in Christ's name. Good to see you all not so bright-eyed or bushy-tailed. Uh, how many are not fans of the time change? I don't have my hand up because this is the deal. It's inconvenient for just one day, maybe two or three, and then we get all this daylight, right? We can take walks, we can work in the yard. It's kind of a metaphor for, you know, the Christian life. We, we sacrifice a little and we're blessed with so much more. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So it's going to be a great day. I'm so glad you're here. We greet those who are watching on our live stream and again pray that uh, the Lord will fill your homes with his presence. Hear these words from Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will, I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. So God, we have gathered to praise you because you love us, because you have invited us to draw near to you. And uh, we want to be here, Lord. We, it was a little harder to get out of bed, but we know that this hour makes a difference. Uh, as we encounter you, uh, we find help and hope and courage. Just to, We invite you to draw near to each one here in this building and all those on our live stream. Um, just enable us to um, fix our eyes on you, God, that gives us perspective. Our problems um, become a bit smaller. Um, just commit this service to you. Be glorified in, in all that happens this day, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess together, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is coming again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remain standing as we worship. Amen. It's time to praise the Lord. You ready? Help me sing it this morning. We waited for this day. We waited for this day. We've gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire would burn our hearts with truth. Your love is with Yeah, we want to, we want to see you so close. 
again. Open up. Amen. Amen. It's good to be with you uh, this morning in the house of the Lord as we sing and continue to praise and lift him up this morning. Well, I can see the world is raging at my feet. I can feel from those surrounding me, I can hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. I can walk down this dark and painful road, I can face every fear of the unknown. I can hear all God's children sing. Out, we will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. The same power that arose Jesus from the grave, the same power that commands the dead to wake, lives in us, it lives in us. Same power that commands. 
a shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain for us. We sing to you in your sanctuary this morning, Lord, for you are worthy. And we just thank you so much for the love that you pour out to us each and every day. And when we're faced with that in these moments, Lord, we're just blown away by the love you bestowed upon us. And so we sing of that love this morning and revel in its beauty. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. And you have been so, so kind. Tell him this morning. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You've been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You've been so, so mountain you won't climb up coming after me do you believe that this morning there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me ah that's good news there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me yeah Sing it like you believe it.
Think about that for a minute. Let's just contemplate it for a moment. Lord, the price that you paid for me, even when I was still a sinner, Lord, you showed your love in this. But you laid your life down for me. And even when I showed you no love, Lord, still your love pursued me even then. And so, uh, what can I do this morning but sing about it and give you praise for it? And then as you've commanded to turn my life back to you as an offering and a sacrifice. So Lord, would you have your way this morning among your people and in this space? And God, may we consider in light of everything that you've done for us, what can we give back to you, Lord? How can we serve you better this morning? How can we give more of ourselves so that you may shine brighter, more of you and less of me? And we just trust that what you have for us this morning is your word, we pray. You're anointing upon Pastor Dave this morning as he brings a message from your heart to our own. Give us ears to listen and a brain to receive and a soul that is hunger, hungry and thirsty for more of you. And in all the things that you do, we'll give you the honor, the praise, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to have some Olivetians with us. That's uh, Students of Olivet, Nazarene University, welcome, welcome. I wish you were here last Sunday because we had a, a good time with our children. Um, Tori did a Lammy sketch, and uh, we had Ethan and Lily getting their groove on, and I donned a rainbow wig, which I'm sure some of you are thinking is you know, kind of beneath what a pastor should do. So if you feel that way, you're definitely not going to like this. I've had this for two years, but the pandemic kept me from wearing it last year. You know why I'm wearing this, right? Because I'm talking about money today, and that too. <laughs> Green, you know, money, and, and at the end of the sermon, there'll be a pot of gold. That's as funny as I get, so, you know. We haven't talked much about money. I think since the pandemic, it, it's kind of hard for me to share, hard for you to hear, but it's vital to us as believers in Jesus. It is one of the marks of Christ followers, a spirit of generosity. Jesus talked more about money than heaven and hell combined, and even then he talked about love. So we need to, to get giving this morning. Um, the good news is we're not in crisis. As you'll hear at the end of the sermon, our church finances are healthy and in good shape. But I think, I think the Lord wants to, to help us with this important area. So let's look at a few verses in Mark chapter 12. I invite you to stand for the reading of the word. Mark 12, beginning with verse 41. Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple, the, the temple in Jerusalem, and watched as the crowds dropped in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions, for they gave a tiny part of their surplus, but she poor as she is, has given everything she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. A burglar broke into a home one night and saw the, the family valuables, including, you know, a new Xbox and, 
you know, was so excited, put it in his bag, when all of a sudden, out of the darkness, he heard a voice. Jesus is watching you. He froze, clicked off his flashlight, and stood motionless, his heart racing. But he didn't hear anything else. So he thought, you know, he must be under too much stress and promised himself a, a vacation after his next big score. Turned his flashlight back on and continued loading the family goods. When he heard the voice again, Jesus is watching you. Well, freaked out, he flashed the flashlight all over the room, looking in every corner, and there he saw it. In the corner of the room, a parrot. Did you say that? He hissed at the parrot. The parrot replied, yes, I'm just trying to warn you. Warn me, the burglar laughed. What's your name? The parrot replied, Moses. The burglar said, well, what kind of an idiot would name their parrot Moses? The parrot replied, the same kind of idiot that would name its Rottweiler Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is watching the widow and the other givers on this occasion, and, and he's watching us. We believe in the omnipresence of God, that, that he is everywhere. He sees everything. But that's not the only reason or even the best reason why we give. So let's, let's walk through that this morning. Some thoughts from our text and from other scriptures about why we make the effort to, to bring offerings to church and to give to others. Why give? It's expected. It really is. In this day, the residents of, of Jerusalem, really all the Jews, were expected to bring their temple tax you know, to the temple once a year, a half shekel tax, equivalent of a, a couple days wages. Uh, I learned that, that even Jews living outside the Holy Land were expected to somehow get the money to Jerusalem. Don't know if that's what the widow, widow was doing on this occasion, but it was expected. And beyond that, there seems this pretty clear expectation from Old Testament scriptures that, that God's people would, would tithe. They would give 10% to the Lord. Famous verse from Malachi we'll look at later, but it really began with with Abraham, the patriarch of Israel, offering a tenth of, of all his resources to the high priest Mil Melchizedek. And that just seems to be God's expectation going forward, that, that we would honor him, that, that we would willingly offer back to him a tenth. Especially we who have been entrusted with so much to whom much is given, much is required, Jesus says. We give to meet needs. The temple tax helped maintain the temple. I doubt they had, you know, utility bills or property tax, but things wore out, and they were required to care for their priests. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians that, you know, those who give themselves to, to proclaiming the gospel, to, to ministering, you know, to congregations are, um, you know, can expect to be uh, taken care of, to be compensated. It's in scripture. I didn't make it up. But I also think the, the goal is to, to help people, to meet the needs of people in this life who are distressed, who are hungry, who are burdened, but most of all, who are, who are sin sick because we all are, apart from Christ. What we do here, hopefully, and I think it does, change eternal destinies. That's, that's a pretty good reason to give, right? Well, I'd rather have a, a new bicycle or, you know, something nice <laughs> than change someone's forever. Now, this is another reason why some people give. 
it's not a good reason, but we acknowledge it in light of the text to impress people. In fact, you can cross that out if you're taking notes because that's not a good reason. And, and really, it's not all that relevant to us since we don't even you know, pass the plate anymore. If you're dropping money in the boxes on the outside, I don't see it. Um, and that's okay. Jesus makes it pretty clear we're, we're to be discreet in our giving. In contrast to the way it seemed to be done in that day, Jesus uh, calls out the Pharisees for trumpeting their giving. And I don't think they were blowing literal trumpets my understanding is that the offering boxes or receptacles kind of look like trumpets. You know, big at the top, narrow at the base. And when they came to temple, when they came to church, they would make a production out of giving their offering. And, you know, that wasn't just loose change. That was their money, coins. Some coins worth hundreds of dollars each. And they made sure everyone heard it. And that was all the reward they were going to get, Jesus says. Contrast that with the widow who had just two small coins. I mean, still made some noise, maybe to her embarrassment. They knew the sound of, you know, major coinage versus the widow's paltry offering. But she didn't care about that. Another reason we give, we learn elsewhere in the New Testament, is to combat materialism. It's real danger of, you know, getting too caught up in the things of this world. Paul says to Timothy that, that the pursuit of wealth can lead to, you know, drifting from the things of God. It can get you in trouble spiritually. Wealth isn't inherently sinful, but it's hard, Jesus says, for rich people to keep first things first, to keep their priorities in order. It says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's just kind of the way it is. The more stuff we have, the more we care about the here and now. And this world isn't our home. I mean, it's here to enjoy. We talked about last week. God has blessed us with so many good things, but this isn't all there is. So we give, I think, to, to remind ourselves of that, to combat that. I think it's one of the you know, strategies for overcoming that tendency within us. The more we have, the more we're expected to give. Otherwise, money becomes too important. One final reason, and the best one of all, we give to express love. Earlier in Mark 12, Jesus summarizes the whole Old Testament the greatest commandments are to love the Lord your God with your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And I hope you'd all say, yeah, I do that. I feel that. I love God more than anything, and, and I love people. And, you know, it's good to say that. It's good to feel that, but talk is pretty cheap. So one of the ways we can express love for God is it's through giving. When we give, talk later, I, I think it delights God. It, it pleases him. It, it lets him know that he is number one in our lives. And as we give, we believe others come to know him. I think that's why the widow gives. She doesn't care what people think. She's probably not too concerned about becoming materialistic. And at this point, she doesn't even know Jesus, but she, she just had this overflowing love for God, her creator, her, her God, the one who had provided for her life. And she couldn't help but give. 
Love compels her to give. But did she have to give so much? You know, she had, I don't know, a dollar. I I don't know what the equivalent would have been, 50 cents. And if she'd have given half of what she had, you know, surely we'd still be impressed. Why did she give it all? We don't really know. It does raise the question, though. How much is enough? What does God really expect from us? I mean, don't you want to know if if we have this obligation, if we can do something that pleases God and ward off materialism, and and it's not a hard, fast rule. I mean, well, I kind of think it is. I'm a preacher. I think 10% is a good start. I think that's what the Bible says. It's pretty clear that it's called the tithe. It's 10% of what we make. Return back to God. And at no point did, you know, Jesus say, you know, you know what was written in the Old Testament? You forget that. It doesn't matter. In fact, there's one scripture, and this is the New Living Translation. Jesus says, yeah, you should tithe. By all means, tithe. Just don't settle for that. You know, don't settle for doing your financial duty and not love people. You know, he's telling the Pharisees that, that that's not all God expects. But by all means, do that. God made this world, and he kind of knows what works. He's pretty good at math, and he knows if we trust him with the 10%, then the 90% is enough. It really is. I mean, maybe initially we've got to make some lifestyle changes, and, you know, it's, it's hard if you've never done it to trust God with, with that much, but a tenth, it seems reasonable. And it works. I I hear people say, yeah, I didn't know how it would work, but I I brought my tithe to the Lord, and all of a sudden, I was able to pay my bills for the first time. I mean, God's math doesn't always compute. But he says, test me in this. Bring your tithe to the storehouse and, and see if I won't open the floodgates of heaven. When we trust him, he, he helps us. And if that's all God expects, then I think, you know, some of us would be, oh, that's a relief. But here we have an example of a woman who gave everything. And there are times in the Gospels, Jesus says, sell all your possessions, give to the poor, and come and follow me. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, says the psalmist. And it's so good, Paul repeats that to the Corinthian church. Everything we have belongs to God. And if we understand what he's done for us, we'll offer everything back to him as an appropriate sacrifice. That doesn't mean, you know, we're liquidating our assets and bringing it all to the church unless he tells you to. But I think that's the point. What what does he want you to do with the 90% that's left, with what he's entrusted to you, with your home and car and, and influence? It's a great way to live. God, how do you want me to spend the money you've entrusted me with? It's all come from you and you call the shots. And I think most days he said, well, just, you know, manage your life, make a good plan, work the plan, stay out of debt as much as possible. But sometimes he'll say, you know, this young woman headed to Peru in a few months because she's called of God, and I think you can help her get there, you know? It's like, God, you you would use me to help someone take the good news of Jesus to Peru? Thank you, you know. 
Or maybe it's a homeless guy on the corner who just needs a sandwich. And, you know, Grant keeps reminding me, we don't have to help everyone. We don't have that burden, but just do what God tells you to do, right? And it's kind of a fun way to live. It's like, okay, God, what do you have in mind for me today? You know, I'm listening. It's all yours, so you just say the word. And, and if he doesn't, it's like, well, maybe tomorrow I can make a difference. People who have been bought with a price, who have been purchased for Jesus. Just come to that place where whatever he says to you, your answer is yes, because it's good. It's the best way to live. But what happens then, you know? I bring my tithe, I, I give for missions and help the homeless people and Bridge Haven or whatever. What happens? God is glorified. That's why we're here, to bring him glory. And I just get this picture of Jesus sitting there watching this widow who's not looking for any credit, drop in all she has, and he's just beaming. When we're obedient, when we're faithful, it glorifies God. He says to the Philippians through, through Paul that the, the gifts you send, the offerings you give are a fragrant offering like the animal sacrifices that were offered in Old Testament times. It, it blesses God. It, it reaches his nostrils. He sees. He, he, he's blessed by a person, by a people who say, I trust you, God. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I know you are good, and your word is true, and I trust you. He says, yeah, way to go. It brings him great glory. And it helps people. When we give, the kingdom of God flourishes. It, it grows. It expands. We pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. And it's a good prayer. But again, when we're obedient, when we do what God tells us to do, that, that kingdom takes root. Love and justice and mercy and hope and peace, I, I think they start to expand, and, and it's a kind of a sacramental thing. We do our part, and God does his part, and we might get to baptize five more people. That's pretty cool. We might hear stories of someone who's turning from their addictions and trusting in Jesus. I, I think those things happen when God's people are faithful. And we get to pay part of the salary of 737 Nazarene missionaries. How cool is that? I mean, they're out there taking the gospel to people who've never heard. And we get to be a part of that. Um, God's not willing that anyone perish. It has been said that if every Christian tithe, then every person would at least hear about Jesus. Every person on planet Earth, the, our resources could fund complete world evangelism. The kingdom of God, that's, that's what we want. We want God to become famous here on planet Earth Amen. and in Cedar Rapids. So we give. And in the process of blessing God and helping people, it comes back to us sometimes tangibly like man, how did I get to take this great trip? Or 
live in this nice house. I mean, this isn't prosperity gospel. It's, it's not a guarantee that if you give, you'll get, but it's, it's in the Bible. Give and it will be given to you. Pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. And maybe that's not finances or stuff. I mean, there's, there's things in life better than that. But God keeps his promises. He blesses those who trust him. In this life, there are blessings to be had. And maybe it's just knowing that God's pleased and, and we have our priorities in order. I don't understand the treasure in heaven thing. You know, heaven's going to be pretty awesome. Understatement of the year. But if we give, if we invest in things that last, we're storing up treasure in heaven. Nicer mansion, bigger harp, I don't know. Maybe there'll be more precious souls there someday. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? I'm not sure anything else really matters than touching people in Jesus' name. That's why we give. And it's something that's hard to talk about, and, you know, I didn't want to beat you up too bad. I think we're doing really well, but it doesn't matter how the church is doing. It's, it's kind of like, God, how am I doing? Am I trusting you? Am I living your way? We, uh, we have giving envelopes, not that anyone uses that anymore, available in the link. You can go online and give. Um, what helps for a lot of us, what, what's easy is just uh, a regular deduction. You, you hardly even miss it. Well, maybe. but Generosity is a mark of Christ's followers. It's where God is trying to take us. Will we let him? Since you excel church in so many ways. I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. Amen. God, I thank you for helping me today, and I pray you'll help us, Lord. I, I don't want people to feel bad, but you are good, good Father. Discipline us as your dearly loved children. You know what's best for us, and sometimes less is more, Lord. This is a faith-strengthening, spiritual discipline. I've, I've seen it. When we put you first, you do what you do, and it's beautiful. So help us, God, to trust you. Help those, Lord, who are struggling financially, who maybe have always struggled financially, and maybe they will always struggle until they do things your way. And God, make us giddy givers. Like it's not a hard thing to do to offer back to you what you require. How can we not, in light of what you've done for us in Christ Jesus? So we offer ourselves back to you as an offering today. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence. Before your throne, before the Holy One of Heaven, and it's only by your blood, and it's only through your mercy, Lord, I come. Let's sing together. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one. Praises that I see 
Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh, Lord, I bring an offering to you. Let's sing it again. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praise that I see. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh, Lord, I bring an offering to you. Oh, Lord, I bring this offering to you. Amen. I think we're going to have a financial report now uh, from Tina. So excited to hear what the Lord has from her. I have the privilege of bringing a good financial report for you guys this year. Um, so the church year begins on June 1st and carries through May 31st. So we are nine months into this year so far. Um, a year ago, about a few months before the church year starts, we do the budgeting process. And we had no idea what this next year was going to hold for us. Um, so... Uh, the, um, I'm pleased to report that we have exceeded our income budget and our expenses have come in under budget also. Our main source of income is our tithe and offerings. And if you see that category, we are over by 40,327. And our total income is 50,337 higher than our budget, which is a positive variance. The next slide. I'll let you have a moment to look at the church expenses. The first column is the actual amount spent in the first nine months. The second column is what we budgeted. And the third is our variance. So a negative variance or ones in parentheses means that we spent less than what we budgeted, which is a savings. The next slide has a few more of our church expenses. And a couple I want to highlight is missions. Uh, missions, we did overspend, but that's because we overgave in missions. So whatever we bring in for missions is what we spend and pay out in missions, um, or we have reserved for that. Also, our budget is higher than what we budgeted, and that's because it's based off our percentage of income. So since our income was higher, our budgets are higher. And that's money that is sent to our district church and the general church to help support minutes. Um, missionaries also. So our overall total expenses were 30372 less than what we had budgeted, which um, earns us a smiley face. Um, the increase in income and reduced expenses um, also allowed us then to reserve almost 115000 in our contingency fund. Lastly, I want to leave you with a verse um, from 2 Corinthians 9-11. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. And it's been encouraging to me to see God working in our church and seeing people trusting God um, by giving during this year of uncertainty. And I also want to thank God for his protection and his provisions to us as a church. Thanks, Tina. Yeah, I think the Lord knew I couldn't handle the stress of uh, being in deficit all year, so that was nice <laughs> in the midst of everything else. But um, the leaders are committed to being faithful stewards, whether we bring in too little or too much. Um, but I, we do feel like the Lord has some plans for us, so pray with us that he'd show us how we can better serve our community with the resources given to us and in light of that, just want to remind you, we have offering boxes around the outside. If you want to drop in an offering, you can also go um, 
to our website or give online or text to give or mail it to the church. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness. And, and those who are on our live stream, I'm just so um, thrilled at your stewardship. I, I think much of our, um, you know, excess is because we've, we've had faithful givers through our live stream this year. So thank the Lord. I, I think, you know, we should clap or something because God's been so good to us. So thank you. Thanks. Last couple weeks, we've talked about um, various district retreats, fast approaching. I've signed up for the men's retreat. I hope others have as well. Go to the Iowa Nazarene website. It's $50. If you don't have that, let us know because we want you to go. Uh, the women's retreat is a couple weeks later. You can go to the same district website and sign up for that. I think theirs is more expensive because they have, you know, flowers and pillows and stuff like that. But I'm going to get in so much trouble for that. I just know. Yep. <laughs> Easter is less than a month away. Actually, three weeks from today, we approach Easter um, by celebrating special services throughout that week. Monday, Thursday, uh, we will be um, bringing in a Jews for Jesus representative to do the Christ in the Passover presentation. Um, powerful, ancient um, celebration that points to the Messiah and what Jesus did. So I hope you'll join us for that. Um, and then Good Friday, we'll have a 7 o'clock service. Great way to prepare for Easter Sunday normal schedule on Easter. I encourage you to pick up some invitation cards. Um, we have them available out in the link. We'll be live streaming all these services, so if friends and family aren't able to come live, encourage them to tune into our live stream. Last but not least, we announced last Sunday we're going to do a comedy night, and uh, we, Jason has in as volunteered to MC it. I, I, we have some funny people here. I'm not one of them, but we have some. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll gather together on April 16th and just laugh together. So it'll be a good time. You can invite your friends to that too. I'd like to close our service with prayer. Brooke, come stand up here. I, I referenced you. She's our missionary trying to get back to Peru. Um, and if you feel led to uh, support her, come talk to her. Um, are there any others who just want to come forward for prayer as we close? I know it's been a tough week for some and others fighting issues in their lives, and I just want to pray a blessing over anyone who just physically wants to bring their needs forward today. So no one's moving, but that's okay. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for this time together in your house. Thank you for our young Olivet friends. God, just bless them and their schooling. Um, just guide their lives, Lord. Uh, make them world changers in whatever profession you've called them to. Thank you for everyone who's taken this time out to worship with us, who've, uh, who've opened their hearts up to the truth of your word, Lord. Um, We know you want to help us, and God, we want to glorify your name, so just use what has been said to accomplish your purposes. God, I do pray for these standing before me, Lord, humble servants who don't have it all figured out, and I'm one of them, but you are all-powerful and all-loving and all-knowing, God, and, and so we bring our stuff to you. Just be at work in every life, Lord. Give guidance and confidence and peace and discipline, Lord, to overcome addictions and hope that we're never too far gone. Your grace is sufficient. So hear our prayers today, Lord, help Brooke to be able to raise the remaining funding so she can fulfill your call in her life and, and be with Joy Richter as she's serving you in Germany. <clears throat> God, be with those who are sick. God, I, I lift Oscar, Richie, I, I know he's been improving, but just 
Restore full health to him. Be with Ruth Height, Lord, as she rehabs for a while, Lord. Give her strength and peace. Thank you for touching Jan Boxa and her son, Darren. Lord, keep healing the, their bodies. And others who may be homesick today, our young mothers who are expecting, Lord, I, I know they need your strength every day. Just be with them. Bless those on spring break this week. God, may, uh, may they find God-honoring ways to fill their time. So many things you say, have at it. I've given you life as a gift. But may we be aware of the lies of the enemy who's come to steal, kill, and destroy. God, be with uh, our missionaries today all over the world, Lord. I, I'm sure they've faced some overwhelming challenges this year. I pray that all Nazarene churches like ours have, have been faithful to support them. Probably the best dollars we ever spend. Just encourage them today. God, we lift our, our dear friend Milton Gay to you. He's, he's got the COVID and it's, it's, he's been in the hospital for the last couple of weeks. Just turn the tide in his body, Lord. Restore his health. Be with his family. And be with our people. Some awaiting vaccine. Just continue to keep us safe, God. And help us to overcome our fear. So we can do what you're calling us to do. Just may we leave this door with the confidence that nothing we face is too big for you. May your light shine brightly within us so that people will see you and be drawn to you. We love you and pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Let me, once you stand and uh, let me give you the blessing from Philippians. And my God will meet all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Go in peace.